Today the Church of England commemorates Richard Roll. Who on earth is he, you may ask? Well, I certainly hadn't heard of him, so I looked him up. It turns out that he was an English hermit, mystic and religious writer. He was alive during the early part of the 14th century and was one of the most widely read of English writers during the 15th century, more so even than Chaucer. His work has been published in many learned books, some as recently as 2018 and 2020. I had heard of anchorites and anchoresses, men and women who chose to be walled up in a room attached to the side of a church with only a small slot opening into the church so that the services could be heard and the sacraments received, and with a small window opening to the outside world or a door for a servant to bring food and necessities and to take waste away. People used to go to the outside window and seek these people's prayers for any situation of need. I thought that there were unlikely to be any hermits these days, but I discovered to my surprise that I was quite wrong. By putting the words modern day hermit, England, into Google, I discovered there is a lady called Rachel Denton who lives in a small Lincolnshire village. In 2006, she vowed to stay in St Cuthbert's house, which is her hermitage, for the rest of her life. She's chosen to follow a rule of life, which described how she would live in simplicity, solitude and silence, staying and returning there as much as her duties permit. She spends much time each day in prayer, which gives her life meaning. But as there is not much call for making rush mats and rosaries these days, she makes her living from a small calligraphy workshop set up in one of the rooms of the bungalow, which is her hermitage. Apparently, she has a love for words, which is somewhat perverse for someone who chooses to live in silent and alone. Any time not spent in prayer and calligraphy is turned to the garden and the production of organic food. She communicates with the outside world via Facebook, Twitter and email, but doesn't carry on a conventional correspondence with the general public. I was interested to read that she occasionally accesses worship online, just like many of us are doing these days. Reading about Rachel during this time of our third lockdown gave me real pause for thought. So many people are now living in solitude because the coronavirus has made it necessary, rather than by any choice of their own or a sense of religious calling. We have spent more time alone or with just the one or two people in our support bubble than many of us have spent in years. Many have found comfort and refreshment in their own gardens or during their allowed hour of daily exercise at a distance from others. Some of you will know that I had back surgery just before the first lockdown, so spent quite a bit of last year recovering and getting well again. I've also taken the opportunity to slow down and enjoy being less busy and less controlled by the demands of time. I'm enjoying being creative, jigsaws, knitting and crochet being my favourites. And I've allowed myself to get lost in a book much more than I would usually. But I haven't been totally alone in the house or garden for much of that time. I wonder how I would have coped without my husband and the dogs for company. Using the telephone and long chats with my sister have been a real boon. But I'm not required to shield due to my age or due to health restrictions, although my husband is shielding for both reasons. And I have been needed to be extra careful to ensure he is safe when I've been out to do shopping and things like that. We have had choices and a car, so we've been able to escape from our four walls and go to local woodlands to exercise the dogs. 
We all know of many people who are finding the requirement to stay at home, unless absolutely necessary, a big challenge. But I wonder whether anyone you or I know has discovered that they would rather spend their time totally alone with only God at their side. We are reminded during Lent, which is only a few weeks away, that Jesus spent 40 days alone in the desert before his ministry began, and that this was a time of testing, both physically and spiritually. The Bible also tells us that Jesus regularly spent time alone in prayer during the years of his ministry, last of all in Gethsemane, the night before his crucifixion. His example is a good one for us today. Perhaps we need to see the enforced time at home as a God-given opportunity rather than an imposition. An opportunity to slow our lives down, to make time and space for quiet, for reading the Bible, for sitting quietly in God's presence, listening and being open to anything which he might choose to communicate with us. Time to simply be. Reframing this current situation as an unexpected and free of charge retreat from all the hassles of life won't make all the distress and anxiety go away. But it can help us to relax and value this time rather than to fight against it. Simply sitting and telling God your worries, asking him to take care of them for you and asking him to give you a sense of peace really does work. I recommend you give it a try. If you are struggling to structure your time, picking up a new habit, such as reading a passage of the Bible at a set time each day, may be helpful and will remind you of all that our hope in God brings. There are details of the day, daily Bible readings on the parish newsletter each week as a starting point. If you are watching this on your phone or a laptop or a tablet computer, then you have many extra resources at your fingertips. If you are proficient with the technology, you can look up Bible passages in different translations using the Bible Gateway website. Comparing these can often help to clarify the meaning of complex passages, particularly such as the letters written by Paul. I was given a contemporary English version of the Bible when I was licensed as a reader. It doesn't have the poetic sound of the tra traditional translations but it is simpler to listen to and to read and is written in relevant English to communicate the meaning of the original text. Why don't you give that a try too? Alternatively, there is the Daily Hope phone line. This is a free phone line. Just call 0800 804 8044 at any time of day or night. There are prayers, readings, reflections, music and hymns, as well as full worship services from the Church of England. If you have the technology, but not the proficiency, why not phone a friend or perhaps a grandchild and get them to talk you through the steps to become more proficient? Your family and friends will feel really valued to be able to help. And no doubt the issues raised by any mistakes you make, often described as operator error, will give rise to some much needed laughter. Something that you might also enjoy is having a go at listening to one of the Church of England's podcasts. These podcasts can really give you a sense of worshipping with others for a short time of each day. Or you can download the free Time to Play, Time to Pray applications on modern phones. There is prayer for during the day and there is night prayer. 
you can listen when it suits you. I like to listen to night prayer just before I go to sleep at night. Whatever you do or don't do, remember that the Holy Spirit is with us at all times. The prayer called St Patrick's Breastplate can be a great help reminding us of this. Here is part of it. Christ be with me, Christ within me. Christ behind me, Christ before me. Christ to win me. Christ be with me, Christ within me. Christ behind me, Christ before me. Christ beside me, Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Well, I started by talking about Richard Roll, which led me to comparing being a hermit to living under the restrictions of the COVID-19 pandemic. From there I discovered some of the many things that we can do to enrich our faith and gain comfort even while living under these current restrictions. And now I will close with prayer for all of those we all know and love. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, bereaved or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you all, and I hope to see you again before too long.